Welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's discuss about aspirin. Aspirin is one of the oldest analgesic anti-inflammatory drug. According to its chemical structure, it is known as acetyl salicylic acid. When taken, it is converted into salicylic acid in the body, which performs most of aspirin's action. Mostly, they act as an analgesic, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory and anti-aggregatory. Let's look at each one of the functions. Let's look at each one of the functions. Alright, starting with the analgesic property of aspirin. It should be taken at 0.3 to 1.5 grams per day dosage for its analgesic action. And at this dose, it relieves inflammatory pain, tissue injury related pain, connective tissue pain and integumental pain. It does all these by obtaining peripheral pain receptors, by preventing prostaglandin mediated nerve ending sensitization and by raising pain threshold. Being an antipyretic drug, it reduces fever by resetting hypothalamic thermostat. Thereby, it promotes heat loss through sweating or cutaneous vasodilation. However, it doesn't decrease heat production. To be an anti-inflammatory drug, the dosage required is 3 to 5 grams per day or 100 mg per kilogram per day. At this dose, it suppresses the signs of inflammation like pain, tenderness, swelling, vasodilatation and leukocyte infiltration. However, the progression of the underlying disease which caused this inflammation is not affected. The dosage needed for anti-aggregatory action is 75 to 325 milligram per day and it does this by irreversibly inhibiting thromboxin A2 synthesis by platelets. And thereby, the platelet aggregation is interfered and bleeding time is prolonged. Now let's have a look at the pharmacokinetics of aspirin. Absorption of aspirin takes place at stomach and small intestine, but it has got poor water solubility. So, microfining the drug particles and inclusion of basic salt increases its solubility. It gets metabolized in gut wall, liver, plasma and other tissues by a process called deacetylation, which means the acetyl group is removed from the acetyl salicylic acid molecule and the salicylic acid is set free to perform its function as it's the active form of the aspirin. Both aspirin and salicylic acid are conjugated in liver with glycine to form salicylic acid. Approximately 80% of the distributed drug is bound to plasma protein and the volume of distribution is approximately 0.17 liters per kilogram. It enters the brain slowly and has the ability to cross placenta. Excretion mainly occurs in the form of salicylic acid along with few other minor metabolites by glomerular filtration and tubular secretion. And only one tenth is excreted as free salicylic acid. The plasma half-life of aspirin as such is 15 to 20 minutes. But when aspirin is taken together with that of released salicylic acid, it becomes 3 to 5 hours. The plasma half-life of the aspirin at its anti-inflammatory dose is about 8 to 12 hours, while that of the poisoning, which is around 10 grams per day, may be as long as 30 hours. Thus, elimination is dose-dependent. Now let's look at the various uses of aspirin. Mainly they are used as analgesic, which is painkiller. They are used for headache, tooth pain, back pain, muscle pain, joint pain, muscle pull, neuralgias and dysmenorrhea. Also it is used as an antipyretic drug to treat fever of any origin. However, Paracetamol is safer and generally preferred for fever. It is also used for acute rheumatic fever, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, post-myocardial infarction, post-stroke patients and in Kawasaki disease in order to treat vasculitis and to prevent aneurysm formation. 
but we need to know it also has got some adverse effects. Let's look at them. These adverse effects vary with different doses of aspirin. Let's have a look at each one of them. At analgesic dose, it causes nausea, vomiting, epigastric distress, occult blood loss in stools, gastric mucosal damage and peptic ulcer. Rashes, fixed drug eruption, urticaria, rhinorrhea, asthma are all infrequent adverse effects but they can be very serious. At their anti-inflammatory doses, which is around 3 to 5 grams per day, aspirin produces a syndrome called salicylism. Dizziness, tinnitus, vertigo, reversible impairment of hearing and vision, excitement and mental confusion, hyperventilation and electrolyte imbalance are all the manifestation of salicylism. Also, symptoms of Ray syndrome increases with aspirin intake. Acute salicylate poisoning is another serious side effect. Acute salicylic poisoning. Acute salicylate poisoning is another serious adverse effect in children when dosage goes more than 10 grams. It manifests with vomiting, dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, acetotic breathing, hyper or hypoglycemia. Petical hemorrhages, restlessness, delirium, hallucinations, hyperpyrexia, convulsion, coma and death due to respiratory failure along with cardiovascular collapse. The treatment should be symptomatic and supportive. The most important aspect is external cooling. IV fluid with sodium, potassium, bicarbonate and glucose should be given according to the need of the patient determined by repeated monitoring. Blood transfusion and vitamin K should be given if bleeding occurs. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinair for more. Thanks for watching.